Hello and welcome everybody. This is Will the Spectral Evolver. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to share with you now the recipe for this soup. Okay, and I'm terribly sorry if you thought this was the recipe for the soup itself. This is for the sound design of the soup and how I got it to get onto the iPad and become really dense and uh, controlled in real time. So it all started with a few recordings I made of the soup. Just had a nice sound, a nice thick boiling, boiling sound. So there's three, three recordings. I'll just play for you now. Pretty short, but just so you can see uh, or hear how it all started. So that was the first recording. Here's the second one. And here's the third. Okay, so that's all the sounds in this, uh, this sound design here. You can hear one and two pretty similar. If you listen carefully, maybe a, a slight variation, but the third one definitely is different than the other two in that it's got the kind of the burning sound at one point. It was actually overflowing out of the pot onto the burner, creating that nice kind of hiss sound, hiss sound there. So from those three recordings, I was able to take them and put them in this sound here. So this application is uh, called Kima. This isn't necessarily a Kima tutorial, but um, this is what I'm using to be able to, to get the sound the way I want it and to be performable on the iPad like you saw in that video. Okay, and while there's a number of critical things happening here, probably the most important to understand is this frequency parameter, okay, which I'm gonna go over in a second and then this number of replicated, uh, number of copies. So basically what's happening is I've got my soup samples here, okay? And this is just a full path name on the disk, but you can see I've got one, two, and three. So those are my three soup samples, okay? Then I've instructed this sound to randomly grab one of those samples every time my finger touches the iPad. Okay. And I've made 10 copies for 10 fingers so that each finger can trigger a sound. Okay. Independently. And then the other critical thing, like I was saying, is this frequency part of the sound. Okay. So default's just going to play it back at the rate that I recorded it. Okay. Just in real time, no big deal. But you can see here this times x, this is a real time variable here, okay? And it's scaling the frequency. So what this means is I can control the rate of playback of the sample in real time. So think of it as if you're easier to understand in terms of a sample rate, if you play something back at half the sample rate at which you recorded it, it goes down an octave 
and plays at half the speed. Okay. I don't know if a tape machine is easier, easier for you to understand. If you record something at 30 inches per second and then play it back at 15 inches per second, it goes down one octave and it takes twice as long to play through that same material. Okay. So what's happening here is I'm scaling the frequency by this hot variable, which is controlled by my finger on the iPad. All right. And each one, each finger can control the rate of in playback independently of the other. So when all 10 fingers are down, I've got 10 samples of the suit and I can control the rate of playback independently of each other. And so that's why if you watch that video carefully, you'll see that towards the left side of the player position from the player perspective, the sound gets lower and slower because it's playing back slower than, than it was recorded. And then as it moves further and further to the right, it's playing back at the speed it was recorded. And then it's continuously variable through all the positions between that. And so that's a big part of how this sound is getting there. So we have this really dense layer, 10 samples, because of the copies here, okay? And this uh, rate of playback being able to be controlled in real time affords me the ability to have different layers at different times and perform it a bit more like an instrument, a musical instrument, as opposed to just playing back a sample, all right? So that's the basis for this sound. Now there are some other things happening here, a bit of granular synthesis um, and, and so forth, but the biggest part of getting it to sound the way it is is because I have, again, these 10 copies for each finger, and each one can control the rate of playback independently. So it creates this really dense, thick sound, and obviously your imagination is really only limitations as to you know, the usability or how you might apply this, but it's, and you obviously don't have to use soup or uh, whatever, but it's just, uh, just a thought that if, it's obviously commonly said that sound in sound design layers are our friends. So if that's the case, we want a lot of them and we want to be able to breathe some life into them with a performance. And that's, that's exactly what this sound does. So hope that provides a little bit of insight into, into this sound. And uh, if you have questions, please feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe, get involved, and I'll uh, be sharing more and more things like this. All right. Thanks so much.